All of us have been severely affected by this crisis. We are a small business based in Taree, New South Wales, who offer live production services. As a result of the current restrictions we have had a near 100% loss of business. Instead of shut down completely, we thought we would try a different approach. We chose to try to help by offering broadcast quality live streams to musicians, businesses and anyone else who could benefit from sharing their message in this time of need. We hope you enjoy what we do, as much as we enjoy bringing it to you. Please keep in mind that we are offering these services free of charge. If you can help by way of a donation, please consider doing so via the PayPal link shown on the right hand corner of the stream. If you would like to be part of a live stream or would like more information regarding our safety procedures, please visit our website or contact us on info at plutoentertainment.com.au. Thank you for joining us and stay tuned for more great live streams. Good to you, and welcome to today's um, Biripai Murray Weaving. So, weaving on Biripai country. Today, um, we have Hannah Ballard, who's my sister in law. Yeah. Early, yeah. actually, sorry, she's married, so it's early. <laughs> <laughs> and my mother, Aunty Pam Saunders. Hello there. And I'm Jodie Lawler. Um, Mum and I have been weaving for a long time, and um, I'll just tell you a little bit about how we learnt because um, we learnt from a lady. Uh, out at, um, she comes from Gaduga, but she was living in Orange at the time, Aunty Judy um, O'Neill. And uh, she taught me and she taught my mum and she became really close friends with my mum. And the, one of the um, rules to learning how to weave with Aunty Judy was that we had to share the knowledge and share weaving with other women and make sure that we um, worked across country with that sharing of knowledge. Um, so today we're going to show you a couple of different basic stitches um, and how to start a weave and also um, just a little bit more about um, some of the dyeing and the resources that we collect to weave. Um, so firstly, I'll just um, show you some of the dyeing and what we use for that. So um, if you have a look to the left, right side over here, we have, um, do you want me to bring it up? So we have um, in this box, so I've pre-prepared it, and we have uh, lily pillies. And you can see that the lily pillies have given us a beautiful soft pink colour. And so that's nearly ready to pull out. Um, and then we have over here a waddle. And for the wattle, what I wanted to do was make a, a oxide colour. So what I did was added some rusty old nails and that gives you a, a yellow or a brownie coloured oxide. Um, so like the ochre colours that we get naturally. And then this particular one here is a commercial, um, a commercial dye that you'd get from Spotlight, um, which I use as well. So to get some of those really vibrant colours that we can't find or we're still working out in nature. Um, so just to show you, sorry I'm going to be moving around a little bit so hopefully the cameras keep up with me. This is our lily pilly that's local. Um, it's also an edible plant but it's a dye as well and it makes some nice jams and some nice um, sauces. So yeah that's, that's what's in this one down here. Um, then the other thing, we have um, roots that we use off different plants um, and different trees and these roots create different colours. So this one will create a really yellowy brown colour. And then I have um, the native ginger which creates a purple colour. So once it's all ground up, um, you need to boil this. Um, and one of the things when you're dyeing native plants, um, traditionally we would have used the salt water. Um, so we would have woven near the sea. Um, but you can use vinegar these days and you can buy your salt off your supermarket shelves. Um, one of the things that I use as one of my resources is um, this book here, which is Wild Foods and Plants. And as you can see, it's got lots and lots of tabs in it. 
um, and they're my references as to where I find certain things and who shares that knowledge with me. Um, so yeah, they've found that to be a really great resource. Um, it's Australian Nature Field Guide and um, written by Tim Lowe. Um, some of the traditional knowledge though from our, our mob on country, um, I've worked all over New South Wales and Northern Territory, South Australia and Western Australia, so um, mob on country that I've met have shown me different things and um, I've found that information in that book as well. Um, but the, the difference between mob on country is they know how to harvest it and what it's used for rather than just where the plant is. So um, today, so I'll have a look, closer look if we can go in and zoom in to Arnie Pam. So Arnie Pam today is doing what we call a blanket stitch. So if you can just show that stitch, Mum. So the blanket stitch, we used traditionally as a stitch. We didn't call it the blanket stitch, but it was an adopted stitch by English. And um, they use it and called it the blanket stitch. Um, one of the other stitches that we do is this one here. So this is a little bit different. And this is where you actually um, bind the grass around your um, fill. And you might do that, it's up to you how many times, but I normally look at seven or eight times. And then you um, stitch the grass through to hold it. So you then stitch, stitch through your circle. and it binds it together. So you end up with um, that in the end. Now, weaving is creative, but it's also healing. And um, one of the things that I find with healing, with weaving is that once you get used to doing it, you then start to talk. And it gives women a really good opportunity to talk to the children and teach the children about, um, about culture about where certain resources are, um, but it also gives us the opportunity to talk about social things that affect us in our lives. And when you're weaving with a, with a group of elderly women, they have a lot of advice and knowledge to share. And um, in that part of it, that's where I believe we get healing from weaving. Um, one of the other things that I want to show you is um, in, the, in the front, we have a number of different weaves um, that are already pre-made. So if we come down here, this is a modern take on weaving. And this is one of Arnie Pam's. So um, this is actually um, a lampshade. So um, you know, once you put the light through that and the way that it, it projects throughout your house, then having a modern weaving um, object that just it makes it useful um, but mum might want to share the story <laughs> no, <she's not. laughs> so mum and I try and um, utilize all sorts of things to weave with um, the other thing mum has done down here is um, use an old say, metal structure like a, a vase and she's created her own um, weave so that's a, a, a blanket stitch weave with a fishnet weave. Now this particular weave in here is one of mum's um, weaves that she's been handed down from her dad. Her father, uncle, or my grandfather, Horace Saunders, uh, was a fisherman and fished the rivers of the Manning River for a long time, for his whole life. Um, and he, he was taught that and he taught his sons that. And um, one of the things that we as women picked up was the use of the stitch for the nets. Um, this here is a carry basket, as you can see, to carry um, berries or fish, um, whatever you need to carry in it. You can also um, clean your fish down at the th at, at salt, in the salt water or clean your shells. Um, and that, that's a handy little useful thing. Um, the other reference to it is called a melon basket because it looks a little bit like a watermelon. Um, and then if we come across to the other side, We have a few little things. So we have a little basket, a little basket. 
and then a larger basket. Now the little basket is actually made out of um, pine um, prongs, so the, the um, soft pine, pine that comes pine off... Pine needles. Pine needles. Mm. Um, the, these particular pine needles, though, aren't New South Wales pine needles. They're from Queensland because they're longer and they don't break apart. And then this particular basket is just a larger carry basket. Um, again, it's one of mum's, um, so Aunty Pam's. And um, yeah, so today it's just a modern decoration, but um, in the old days we did use it for various things. And then when we start weaving, we generally start with this, which is a little um, medicine bag that you carry. And that may have had um, berries or certain medicines in it to help you as women with women's business. Um, men also made one of these and um, they would wear them, a smaller one around their neck, um, traditionally. Um, and men also made, uh, so men also weaved and they made um, their carry basket for when they started their process to become men. Um, so yeah, that's, that's another example of some weaves. Uh, one of the things that mum and I have started to get into is sharing culture and sharing stories through weaving. So if you come to the weave at the front here, um, most of you would have heard the story about Titalik. Um, so Titalik the frog, we, I know I got told it too at school, but I also got told it from my nana. And um, I love the story, it just resonated with me. So when we started talking about stories, I said to mum, let's do Titalik first, because that means so much to me. Um, so you can see here, this is a modern take on using these traditional practices where we've woven a frog, and so that's a three-dimensional frog. Um, and then you can see, so in the story, Tiddalik actually goes out, the greedy frog, and he drinks up all the water from all of the ponds and all of the rivers, and he dries the country out, so he puts the country into a drought. And all the animals get wild with him, and they try and work out, you know, how can we make him give us back all the water? So they decided that the only way to do that was to make Tiddalik laugh. So all of the animals tried and tried and tried to make Tiddalik laugh and he wouldn't laugh. And then the, the goanna, I think, it, you correct me mum if I get this wrong, because um, it's been a long time since I heard the story, but the goanna eats up a big amount of food and he's got such a full belly that when he takes off, he wobbles his whole belly and his belly goes sideways. And the kookaburra laughs at the goanna. And then, because the kookaburra's laugh is so contagious, all the animals start to laugh, and then Tiddalik laughs. And then all the water spews out of his mouth and fills back up the creeks and the dams and the rivers. And so that's where, in the weave, you can see all the blue refilling all of the ponds and the dams and the rivers and the creeks across country. Um, so yeah, that was an exciting, but took a long time. Um, and one of the things we did in that too, on our country, the fig tree is extremely important to us as women. The fig represents the matriarchal line, which we follow on our country. And so we utilise and use the fig roots within our weaving, um, which you can't quite see, but when you do look at it close up, you can see um, the fig root within the weave. So I'll just come back to where Han and, Han and um, Mum are at. Um, Hen's learning, so she's just picking it up. <laughs> but if we have a look at Hen's weave, she's going really well. And she's doing the blanket stitch really close. Now, one of the things, when we start to teach weaving, um, we, we work out people's personalities by the way that they weave. And by Hannah's weave, you can tell she's a very organised person and she loves order because everything is perfectly placed. Would that be true, Hen? <laughs> <laughs> Mostly true. <laughs> yeah, so her weave is extremely organised. Um, yeah, so we, when we have people that really don't like to be organised and they just like things to happen as they are and be really fluid, then the weave is looser. You can also and see in here, Arnie Pam started this with the, the red here and then where I've picked it up, it's changed. So yeah, you can see the different changes. style and of weave. It yeah. changes as it goes. And yeah. As you weave your colours in, you could see it just blend in together as, yeah. as one circle. And, and that's a unique thing about weaving. Even though we're doing the same stitch, we all have our own style. 
and um, we create things. We might make a bowl, but the bowls look completely different because Aunty Pam might be doing it or Han might be doing it and it, it just takes on its own form. I'd like to show your mum's a little bit close up because mum does her stitch slightly different. So mum's is a little bit more laid back. <laughs> I'm all over the place today. <laughs> so, and, and as mum said today, this is how she's feeling. So um, yeah, one of the things is your weave is really like your mood. And, and sometimes we have classes where we have people come and weave and, and they are a bit all over the place and they just want the company of women. But when they try and weave, they just make a big mess and they like go, oh, I can't do this. I can't, I can't get, to get it right. And it's not till you take a breath and you relax and you start to enjoy the company that then you, you can get right into your weaving. Um, so yeah, so with mum, um, mum does it slightly different or she's doing it different today where it's spaced out further this and um, it's more relaxed. That's me, other one, me. Where so here, this, she wants to me to show you this because she needs to show you that she's an organised woman. <laughs> 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 and mum is an organised woman, she's a Virgo, so she likes everything to be particular. Um, yeah, so this we made at a, a Master Weavers. So mum made this at a Master Weavers gathering that we had up at Kofsa. And um, this is this weave that I was telling you about before where it's bounded around the grasses and then stitched in. Um, and That's the wild plum too, the colours yeah. of the wild plum and they were all natural colours. Yeah, so, colours. so when we went there we were mm. looking at dyeing and, um, and that's what Mum was just saying that you've got your, your native plum colour there which is the pink which we're trying to replicate with the, um, with the lily pilly. And then you have another native colour dye. So you can see the, the dyes in country, uh, in our country, are very soft. Um, yeah, very soft dyes. So that's why sometimes we use commercial colours just to get that real dark, vibrant colour. So that's it. So that, now the, another thing, and I might get Hen to start trying this so she could show you, is um, this is Angora wool. And um, one of the exciting things about weaving is you don't have to stick to the standard or the norm. And um, what we do with this is we hold this in with our, um, with our weave or with the grasses that we're weaving I'm in. To add a new one. And oh, good, that's good timing if she's adding a new one. But so I we, forgot, so we, you've got to show me again. <laughs> okay, so we add it in um, as a part of the grass that we're weaving in. And, if you can zoom into this, I'll just show you how to add in. So if you're weaving at home along with us and you've got to the point where your grass has run out and you want to start again, that's okay. So this bit here, that's from the last bit of grass you wove in, just leave that on there. And then you come to, you'll see um, on the row below, you've got the, your stitches. You come to your next stitch. And there's a couple of ways. So. You can either tie it together there and that starts your weave or you can do this and this is what I like to do is I like to wrap it with the last grass and twist it together and then add the next stitch. So the stitch, the blanket stitch we're just doing, so just the circle, go through that circle, pull it up and that's your blanket stitch. So it's on there and ready to go. So the next bit Hen's going to do is add in the angora. So that's angora wool. And we just hold it in place like we're holding the grasses together and then add the next stitch in. And with that next stitch, the angora wool starts to be a part of the weave. So if you can continue that, Hen, and then we'll come back to you in a little while. Another thing I'd like to show you, now this is a traditional weave and this is a weave, so I lived in the Territory for a number of years um, from when I was 19. That's and it's going to be my bag, that one. I got in with a family, a Western Aranda family, um, so I have a Yungle family in Darwin which I miss dearly and love. Um, and one of the things, when I met, when I went up there and lived up there I met a lot of people from different countries, from um, Gove and Groot Island and the Tiwi Islands that used to come over for medical um, treatment at Darwin and stay in Darwin. And this particular um, weave is something that I'd learnt up there that I would like to 
um, finish. I haven't finished it yet because it's so time consuming. It's, it's a, what you'd weave to make a carry bag. And it's so... I'll um, show them now. Yeah, it's so complicated. It's like this is be your advanced level weave um, because it goes down, it twists around, then it goes back up and it continues to do that as you weave. But what it does is it allows the bag to stretch. So when you add things to it, so if you, if you take it shopping, say, and you're throwing your shopping in it, then it stretches out to hold what you're, what you're weaving. Where is um, it? So mum wants to show you how this is done because you actually need your legs um, to do this one. So if you could zoom in to mum down here and, and she'll show you. We've got it there on the side. I'll move that out of the way. There it is. It's a back Yeah, can you see it mum? So if you can talk through what you're doing. Yeah. What I'm doing is um, adding another row on. And um, to get it straight and to get my bag into a good shape, I start this way. And my stitch is the old stitch. And it's like a twist. So it's nearly a blanket stitch, but it's not. And this is to add another line. And the other line goes into this part here. And I twist it. To come into this area here. So that's a twist. And once I finish all of this, it's going to be like a, a, a bag. So it'll be a bag to put around and I'll do the handles on it. I'll close the bottom in, but I'll, I'll go right up to my knees with the, um, with the stitching. So the stitching's got to come right up there before my bag is complete. And this way is the easiest way to do make the bags because you get the shape. You also get the roundness and the continuation of the weave when you do it around your legs. Okay, Jo. Awesome. And when you take it off, it looks like that, so. So once I close the bottom in and I put handles on that, that will be a string bag. Yes, yeah, so one of the things that I didn't go through in the beginning when um, we started was just to talk a little bit about what you need to start. So um, some of the helpful things, if you can get yourself some, oh, some of those little alligator clips, even ones that are a little bit bigger. Um, that helps you if you have issues with arthritis. Um, it helps you hold your grass on your weave or hold your weave in place as you're weaving it. So you kind of just clip it there and hold it as you're weaving it. So it's not you're not you're not um, kind of um, tightening your hand up too much. Um, the other thing you need is that you can get these needles um, through the haberdashery area at. Um, at Spotlight or in the supermarket. And they come in packs of two, they're handy. And there's two types, so Hen's got the blunt type and then I've got a sharper one. Um, what I find is if you're a tight weaver, you need a sharp one. And if you're looser or just a comfortable weaver, then you use um, your blunt needle. You definitely need a pair of scissors because you're constantly snipping and cutting certain things. And you need um, your base grasses. So you can either use, so this, this grass here that we're using today is a raffia. Um, the raffia is actually a grass imported, but there are other native grasses you can get, which is lamandra. Um, you'll find lots of lamandra at the beaches or around the beach. Um, and you can also, we use, um, we use fig, 
Um, but you can use all sorts of um, grasses, but there's a lot of preparation when you're using native grasses to make them um, nice and thin to be able to use. Um, and lots of the native grasses can be dyed as well. So, um, and, but some of them have their natural dye. So the native flaxes you can use. Um, the New Zealand flax, the purple one's really cool because it turns black when it dries. So you have a black grass. Um, and the other thing that we get too um, is the jute. So that's what Mum and Hannah are using as their base um, weave at the moment. But you can also get sea grass. Now you can make your own if you like, but it's really time consuming or you can go buy a roll of it for $30 at, at Spotlight. Um, yeah, so you can either make grass for a week <laughs> or go buy it in a second. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's worth, worth getting. Um, I'd like to thank you today um, for coming and, and sharing this because for us as women and Biripai women, we love sharing our culture and our knowledge. Um, one of the things in the next month now that COVID's starting to um, relax a little bit and we're starting to have groups. Mum will be running four sessions, weaving sessions over the next four months. At the moment we're limited to 10 people, um, but as the restrictions open up, our groups may be 20 people um, or more. Um, I think for us, if we can limit it to a, a, a group that we can actually um, mentor and, and teach, then that makes it a little bit easier. But before um, we finish up, what I'd like to do is go and show you what Hen's up to here with weaving her, um, so weaving the, the wool in. So as you can see, um, there's the wools, so there's, there's two sides to your weave. You've got the side where you're weaving in and then you've got your other side. So one side is always neater than the other. Um, but as you can see, it just adds a different dimension when you're weaving in other resources um, that are natural and they just give a totally different look to your weave. You can put um, feathers in there. Yeah, the other thing, yes, you can put feathers in there, Hen, thanks for that. Um, this one here is actually woven out of wool, um, so it's really soft. Now, if you were to make yourself a pair of shoes or want to use it in your hair, then using wool um, is a softer option than using a grass. And the thing about this is it's not going to fade and it's going to keep its shape and colour as well. I'm um, finishing off now, Jo. So if mum's just to... mum's just finishing off. So if you wanted to focus on mum as she finishes off a weave. So when you're doing a weave and you get to the end and you go, what do I do now? Um, mum will show you what you need to do. Well, that's the part where I just clipped off there. And what I do is go round that until... I get all of that end covered and then you have to go back into your stitch to finish off, neaten it off so you're still covering that end and neatening it off and once you do that you finish. What I want to do is um, turn this into a necklace. So I'll get, um, get another piece. Which I need to sew back into. And that goes back into this area here where I've finished off. Pull it up. I needed to make it long enough. I could have made it long enough, but at the moment, it's I'm just one. doing a little one. And that's a finished circle. And it's a necklace, so I can't put it on, but that just comes down like that if you had it longer. So that's your finished product. To have long necklace. This one here, I've already finished, and that just comes down over your jumper or whatever you wanted to have it. 
like that. And that just goes down there like that. So, so they're little things that we do at schools for the kids. And um, that one I've just started. So, and this one is a complete one. So it's just making a circle. You can also make earrings the same. So if you had little tiny ones and you wanted an earring down here or a little a tinier one, that went down like that. And you could make it put your clips on and make your earrings. So, so it's pretty. You can do a lot with weaving. You can do whatever you, ever you, ever you can think of to create. Absolutely. So I'd just like to thank you for joining us on Birupai Country. And I'd also like to thank you um, for participating and, and all of the comments that I can see on screen as well. It's awesome. And also Pluto Entertainment, again, thank you so much for allowing us to share our culture, our knowledge, um, and, and engage with community in this way, because I think it's just amazing. Um, for the upcoming workshops, um, they're funded by New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council, so thank you to our local councillor, Peter Smith, for the funding for that. And um, we will be running four workshops, so if you can have a look on the Perfilink Tari Local Aboriginal Land Council page, um, I'll post the dates to start and you'll need to register because we are limited with numbers at this stage. But if you'd like to come and learn this, we can teach you actually how to start your weave and um, we'll create a number of different things depending on your um, skill set for weaving. But thank you again. Um, thank you for joining us. It was wonderful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.